previous video, we were working with physics.spherecast and casting this sphere into the scene and making it collide with objects. And uh, we also did the quick part with the gizmos where it's drawing this uh, sphere cast into the Unity scene window so we could actually see what's going on. And that is only allowed to go out and hit one object and it goes out hit, um, which is only one ray cast hit. So if you want it, ray, if you want this sphere cast to hit more than one object, just the whatever the first thing it hits, and you want to figure out everything that it hits inside of the area of the sphere, then that's where we're going to have to use physics.spherecast all. And we're going to look at one other variant of that, which is spherecast non alloc or allocated. So um, that is what we're going to look at in this video, spherecast all in the sphere cast non allocated now if you haven't looked at the first video go ahead and check that one out the link is in the description that covers uh what we've already created right here and how to script that which is all the code that you see on the screen right now so here we go let's do the sphere cast all i'm gonna go ahead and stop play mode go back over into here and this whole part where we're doing um the ray cast hit i'm just going to comment that out we're not going to be doing the one ray cast anymore instead we're going to be using physics dot ray cast all physics dot sphere cast all and sphere cast all has eight different definitions uh you can see some of that right here at the scripting page but the one that we're going to use is just like yesterday's video. We're going to use the last one in the list, which takes the most parameters. So it wants an origin. We already have that figured out from the yesterday's video. It needs a radius, which is a sphere radius. We've defined that above right here. And then when it needs a direction, again, the origin and the direction, we've already figured that stuff out. And then it needs a max distance. We already have that. It needs a layer mask, which we have. And query trigger interaction, we're just going to use global. All of that stuff is covered in the first video. Now, sphere cast all. The, the call is complete, but we're going to see that it, it returns to an array of ray cast hits. So we're going to have to define an array of raycast hits so we'll say like this raycast hit and we'll make that an array with the brackets and we'll call that one hits so now that we've defined an, uh, an array of raycast hits we're going to set that equal to the physics dot sphere cast all of course because the sphere cast all returns a array of raycast hits so we have an array of raycast hits called hits and that is equal to physics.spherecast all and now the sphere cast is complete now we're going to want to go through those and do something so let's say for each and i'll say raycast hit i'm going to call it hit in hits so for each hit in in the array of hits we'll do current hit object now the difference here is before it was just one game object we're going to use a list of game objects for all of the current hit game objects so we're going to say uh, public list of game objects and we'll call it current hit objects that is equal to a new list of game objects so now we have a list of game objects instead of a single game object down here so for each raycast hit in hits we're going to say current hit objects dot add and we need to add a game object so i could say hit dot transform dot game object and 
that'll keep adding the same object over and over every single frame. So uh, before we sphere cast every frame, let's go ahead and clear out that list. So we're going to say current hit objects dot clear. And that will clear out the list each time and then it's going to repopulate it with whatever was hit that frame. And the other thing that we should do here is set the current hit distance. This is really just for the gizmos in the editor to visualize the sphere cast. Um, and unless I make a list of um, a list of distances, and um, we can only show one one uh, wire sphere. So we'll just do we'll just do the last item in the list. So we'll say current hit distance is equal to hit dot distance. And so it's going to do a for each loop on here. So the current hit distance is going to get set to whichever the last one of these that ran. So let's go ahead and play that. So it's uh, working. I can see here that I have the current hit object size is zero. And I can see my gizmo isn't working correctly. Let's take a quick peek at that. The reason why is nothing was hit. Uh, so in addition to clearing the the array each the list each frame, we should also set the current hit distance to the max distance. Uh, so it, by default, it's going to be the max distance of five, but if it hits something, it will be shorter than that. All right, so let's hit play again. And now we have the camera, and we can see the sphere cast going out to its max distance. And when it hits the cube, the size goes up to one, and we can see the cube is in the list. And let's go ahead and get the sphere in the way. And just for the sake of testing, I'm going to duplicate this sphere a bunch of times. And now let's see what happens. I'm going to select the camera and it's going to hit the first one. We can see that's it's hit actually two spheres there. But we can see that uh, it's it's hitting everything right down to the cube. So the sphere cast is hitting all objects right there. So our sphere cast all is working and we have a list that populates all the game objects that it's hitting. And the next example I want to look at real quick is sphere cast non alloc, uh, which is the sphere cast, but it stores the result into a buffer. So this is a variant of sphere cast all, but instead of allocating the array, with the result of the query, it stores the result into a user provided array. So let's make this do a sphere cast non allocated call. And back over here, I'm just going to go ahead and comment out this area starting here where it does a physics.raycast all. And instead, let's make it do a physics sphere cast non allocated and there's eight different ways we can use this I'm gonna use the last one which it wants an origin so we have that it wants a radius so we have that a direction uh, now is where it gets different it wants a array of ray cast hits so we're going to need to define uh, an array of raycast hits. So I'm going to say raycast hit, and we're going to want an array of that. We'll call it hits, and we'll say is equal to new raycast hit array. And here's where can, we can define the size of the array. So I could say 10, and now we have a new array of 10 raycast hits. And that's what this that's what this function wants. It wants an array of raycast hits, so I could put hits into here. It wants a max distance, a layer mask, and the query trigger interaction will just use the global setting for that. 
and this is going to return to an integer. So we could see that it's going to return to an integer. So I'm going to say int uh, number of hits is equal to the physics dot raycast sphere cast non allocated. Now I could make this array whatever size I wanted. So if I only checking for two objects, that's fine. But here I've made it 10 and the number of hits is going to be really useful because we want to iterate through each hit and the size of the array is is 10. So let's say we've only had two items, the sphere and the cube. Now we know that we've only hit two items. So an example of that is right here for integer i is equal to zero and we'll say i is less than the number of hits and then we'll say i plus plus now we can basically do the same thing that we've done down here we're going to say current hit objects dot add so we're going to add to our list uh, wh whatever object we have hit. So in this case, its index is i, and that is from the array hits. So we need to say hits with the index of i. And that is a raycast hit result. So we could say transform.gameObject. And we also want to set the distance, so we're going to say current hit distance. And that's going to be equal to, again, hits at the index of i dot distance. Now, we really should see no difference in how things are working. This should be exactly the same as our sphere cast all it's just we have some control over the size of the array that's being used and if i select the main camera and move it closer we could see that it has selected or the ray the sphere cast has hit both the sphere and the cube and current hit objects is a list with a size of two however uh, behind the scenes in this private raycast hit arrays uh, it is an array that's the size of 10 so if we were to hit more objects that would populate uh, up to 10 so I'm going to duplicate the cube and I duplicated it 12 times and if we select the camera we could see that it's only going to go up to a size of 10 because that's how big the array is. If there's more objects than that within the sphere, it's they're just going to get ignored. And that so we have control over that whereas with the sphere cast all itself doing it this way uh, that would not happen. It would populate the list with the total number of objects it wouldn't matter how many there are in here so now I've duplicated a whole bunch and let's go ahead and play and bring the camera a little bit closer we can see that that list is gonna fill all the way up and we don't have control over uh, over how big this is gonna get so those are the sphere cast Sphercast all and Sphercast non allocated. If these tutorials helps you out, remember to subscribe, like, like, put a comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.